good, y'all. Dr. Trey Hunter. Now, during my time of me doing my nutritional thing, I came across a lot of crazy fitness myths that I thought it was debunked, but it's still getting passed around, all right? So today, what we're going to cover is all the fitness myths that are crazy, and if you are a woman, I would love for you to stop doing these things because you're just literally wasting your time, all right? Simple as that. Now, first things first, waist trainers or body wraps, right? So you see um, in the past 10 to 15 years, a lot of people purchasing a lot of waist trainers, body wraps. You see them putting a whole lot of saran wrap around their body. And this thing supposedly supposed to help you lose fat, right? And then you see before and afters, X, Y, and Z. Just going to be 100% on this jaw. That is literally cap, okay? It is humanly impossible for you to literally go ahead and burn off fat with this body wrap. Okay, because if that's the case, everybody will literally do it. And you see a lot of people doing it, but if you look at them in real life, guess what? They didn't lose any fat. Why? So the way the human body works, in order for you to burn fat, you got to put your body in a hormonal profile where it is literally excreting fat out of its fat cells. Okay, now you cannot sweat out fat. That's why if you go into a sauna and you do a whole lot of sweating, you lost three to four pounds, but then right after you uh, start drinking water again, you gain it right back. Why? Because you didn't lose anything. You lost water weight. Hence why my clients know, go ahead and work out first where you're actually burning fat, where you're actually putting your body into a situation where it has no other choice but to utilize some of its own fat, right? And then you go into the sauna to expedite the results, okay? Now, if you have this body wrap or a waist trainer, right, and you're wrapping this on and you do a nice little workout and you notice that, oh, yeah, once I take off this um, body wrap or this waist trainer, I see a whole puddle coming out, right? That is literally water weight, okay? It's not coming off directly from here. It's just that you have this hot-ass thing on your stomach and it's going to produce a little bit more perspiration right here because you got this hot-ass thing on, okay? So think of your fat cells literally like um, a cup, okay? So if you have a cup and you fill a cup up with water, right? What's going to happen is the shape of the water or the water within itself is going to take the shape of a cup, right? Now, if I pour this water out, what's going to happen? What happened to the water? Does it got the same shape as a cup? Not at all, all right? That's what's happening to your fat cells when you literally go ahead and take off this waist trainer, okay? You did not lose any fat, okay? You did not burn any fat, all right? Believe it or not, you just lost a little bit of water weight. And once you decide to drink some water again, you're going to gain it right back, all right? And the same thing goes with the little um, injections that you see now, okay? I see on Instagram, you see some women, they got some syringes, and they're literally sticking you with a needle and the areas that you're supposed to lose fat is supposed to magically go ahead and make you lose fat. But one thing that um, a lot of people also tell you when you do sign up for the services to um, hit you up with a syringe is, hey, make sure you get your diet and workout right too. Or make sure you continue to work out. Why? Because that syringe is not doing nothing for you. Okay? It is the fact that you're actually deciding to work out and eat better. Simple. All right? So please stop wasting your money on body wraps, injections, and waist trainers. Please, you're literally wasting your time, all right? Tip number two, working out helps you lose weight. Believe it or not, working out keeps you metabolically healthy, make you be at less risk for cardiovascular disease, hypertension, type two diabetes, and help maybe lower your risk for cancer. But working out does not help you lose weight. But it is conducive for somebody who's trying to maintain their weight. Why? Because when it's all said and done, it's about how much nutrition you're intaking in and how much you're expelling out, all right? And just so you have an idea of how the human body works, body fat is not here for aesthetics. That's your body letting you know, hey, at one point in time, you overfed me. So what I'm going to do with this extra surplus of energy, I'm going to go ahead and store it somewhere. When a rainy day comes, I'm going to go ahead and utilize it, right? But here's the thing. This our body's running off an old system in a new generation because usually back in the day, if it was only like 100 years ago, there was times where your grandmother or your great-grandfather or whoever literally had a fast, not by choice. That means they had to go two or three days without food, not by choice. Now, fast forward to our generation, we can get food with what? A press of a button. So we're never going hungry. Anytime you feel a little bit of hunger, you're saying, you know what? I need to go ahead and eat because I am starving but you're not really starving, right? So because of that, your body's intaking so much amount of energy that now your body's just always in a storage state. 
It's not in a burning state. So just so you have an idea of how the human body works, the whole purpose of eating is to help your body store energy, right? Now, the average person eats 14 to 16 hours out the day. So the average person eats 14 to 16 hours out the day, right? And there's only 24 hours in a day. You tell your body more times to store than burn. Simple. So that's why um, there's a lot of programs where you can do a caloric uh, deficit diet. But when you're doing a caloric deficit diet, you're literally allowing your body to decide what type of weight is going to come off. Is it going to be some of this bone density? Is it going to be some of this fat? Or is it going to be some of this muscle? Nine times out of ten, it's going to be all three. That's why on my program, you're losing nothing but fat. But in order for you to do that, you got to know exactly what you're doing, which my program actually provides. <laughs> okay? So with that being said, working out does not keep you metabolically it keeps you metabolically healthy. Working out does not help you lose weight. And a lot of women believe, or a lot of people just in general believe, that, oh, because I ate a, um, two donuts, right, and it's 500 calories, that means I can just go ahead and burn off 500 calories, and I'm going to still be a caloric deficit. That's not how the human body works. It's just that simple, all right? So never try to work out with the attempt of, okay, I could just burn this off. Because nine times out of 10, whatever your Fitbit is saying, whatever your Apple Watch is saying, it's inaccurate. Okay, and believe it or not, when you're doing a lot of resistance training, okay, you're not burning as much calories as you actually believe. All right, so tip number three with that being said, you want to always kind of do some cardio. Um, if you are somebody who wants to see the skill drop day in and day out, that is a myth. Okay, believe it or not, if you are somebody who wants to go ahead and lose the most fat, fat possible, you want to go ahead and switch over to cardio and do more resistance training, okay? So believe it or not, when you're doing resistance training, you're not burning as much calories as you think. So if your Fitbit says, oh, you burn 300 calories, nine times a day, you're playing yourself. But what um, you working out do, it keeps your body insulin sensitive when you're working out with, on weights. Also, it helps your body boost its own metabolism. The more muscle you have on your body, the faster your metabolism, okay? So if you're somebody who's just going to the gym every single day and you're doing 20 minutes on the Stairmaster, 20 minutes doing the treadmill, 20 minutes on the bicycle, you're literally wasting your time. You can literally just pick one of those cardio machines, do that for 60 minutes, right? But I want you to prioritize lifting weights, okay? So ladies, a lot of women do that because why? We was all taught or is a stigma that, oh, if you lift weights, you're gonna look like a dude. That is a myth, okay? So ladies, when you get into the gym, lift heavy weights. That's why you see a lot of women um, walking around nowadays um, in the past four to five years that they have big asses. <laughs> just gonna be uh, straight up with y'all. That's because they decide to lift weights and not only just regular weights, now the five to 10 pounds, heavy weights. 40 pounds, 50 pounds. So lift to the point where if you're in the gym, you're doing a, a machine or whatever, you could do 10 to 12 reps. If you're able to do 10 to 12 reps of whatever exercise that you're doing, and you still got some reps in the tank, which means what? If somebody put a gun to your head and said, do two more reps, if you're able to do it, it's too light. So do not play yourself in the gym. You're not there to look cute. Lift heavy weights, okay? And I will guarantee you your body's gonna change as fast as possible, all right? Tip number four. A lot of women thinks, oh, I'm gonna just go to the gym leg day every day, okay? And it's going to build my body up faster. No, that's not also how the human body works. Believe it or not, in order for a muscle to grow, it got to recover. So if you're somebody who is left in seven days out the week and you're always hogging the squat machine station and you're just doing endless squats, your body's not going to grow the days that you're actually deciding to do the squat. Your body's going to grow the day after you decide to rest. Okay, so your muscles actually grow on the day of rest. That's why what you need to do is have at least three to four days of rest. So you can do every other day, right? Or you can do like uh, a split that I do, which is I do two days back to back. One day I'm lifting heavy. The next day I'm lifting at like 70% capacity. The very next day, rest. I am not doing anything with weights. Then I kind of break it up like that, all right? But if you're more advanced, you could kind of do a little bit more. But what you need to prioritize, if you're a beginner lifter, you need to go ahead and throw on rest days because that's the days when your muscle is actually growing, all right? And last but not least, the way the human body works, you're not supposed to just do legs every single day, okay? Believe it or not, your body's going to grow more and your ass is going to grow more when you work out your arms and your chest and your back because your body doesn't want to be kind of like, you know, I'd be lopsided. It kind of want to grow in totality. So believe it or not, if you're doing a full body workout routine versus you just doing leg day every other day, believe it or not, because you're doing full body, your body's going to grow a little bit more than somebody just doing legs. 
okay? So prioritize toning up all aspects of your body. Simple, all right? Tip number five, which will be the last one. Um, when you magically eat carbs late at night, you're just gonna magically start getting fat. No, okay? It's not about how much you eat that gets people fat. My clients already know it's the frequency. So what happens is the main reason why that myth started to come about is because nine times out of 10 at nighttime and it's 11 o'clock at night and your stomach starts to growl, are you making the best decisions? No. You're catering and you're gravitating to something that is very sweet that is not really good for you. Now, if you're gravitating to something that's sweet but also got a lot of protein in it, that's a totally different situation than somebody that's getting something sweet and you're grabbing the haagen and you're grabbing the cookies from the cookie jar or you're getting some cupcakes, or you're getting some Asami cookies like I used to do, <laughs> okay? So what happens is because you decided to eat about two to three square meals throughout the day, right? And then before you go to sleep, throw on some extra sweet things on top, nine times out of 10, that sweet things that you're throwing on top has more calories and majority of the meals that you ate throughout the entire day. That's why you get fat. It's not the fact that you decided to have some cookies late at night, it's the fact you're adding this on top and you're not giving your body an opportunity to do what? Burn its own body fat. Okay, you're just adding on meals on top of meals. And then once you wake up, you're eating again. Then you wake up, you're eating again. So your whole day is consistent of meals. That's why you having a meal late at night is getting you fat. It's not for the mere fact that you're actually deciding to have some carbs late at night. It's the fact you're adding these carbs on top and you're not giving your body any time to burn this energy off. Okay, so I actually had women on my program, believe it or not, because they work overnight, their window is 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. Which means what? From 2 a.m. to 8 a.m., they're literally eating majority of the meals. And sometimes it requires carbs in it. But because they're not eating throughout the whole other course of the day, the whole other 16 to 18 hours, guess what? They're not gaining any weight. They're losing weight, even though they're eating late at night. Okay? So you can eat late at night as long as you're not eating all damn day throughout the entire day as well on top of what you want to eat late at night. Okay? So... Life is all about choices, and what you need to do is put yourself in a predicament where a majority of the stuff in your household you can have, that way you can have your snacks guilt-free. But make sure there are more protein-based snacks versus a snack that has a lot of carbs and fat in it, all right? Today's video, what we covered is please stop buying body wraps and please stop buying waist trainers. The body cannot work like that. You cannot magically shape your fat and shape out your body. You got to actually be in a caloric deficit and burn the fat off. Tip number two, you cannot sweat out fat, okay? So even though a puddle is coming off, I know it looks appealing for Instagram, but believe it or not, you didn't lose anything. Once you drink some water, it's going to come right back, okay? Tip number three, working out does not help you lose weight but working out does keep you metabolically healthy. So at the end of the day, you can lift all the weights and do all the cardio you want, but if your nutrition is trash, then you're gonna gain the weight right back, okay? Tip number four is working out or resistance training makes women bulky. That's not how the human body works. Y'all got a little bit more estrogen in, in y'all. We got a little bit more testosterone in us, and because that is the case, that's why men shape the way we are, but because y'all able to produce babies, naturally, y'all not gonna have as much testosterone for you to go ahead and be bulky like a man, unless you're taking PEDs and steroids, all right? And tip number five, you just magically eating at a certain point of time. After 8 p.m., it's gonna all turn to fat. Believe it or not, it's not about the time that you ate, which is 8 p.m., or because it's at night, it's the fact that you're having that meal or that snack on top of all the food that you had throughout the entire day. So if you're having a meal late at night and that's your only meal during that night, believe it or not, you're gonna still lose the same amount of fat as if you had the exact same meal. It could be ice cream, cupcakes, whatever that may be during the day. It's that simple, all right? So hopefully I learned something today. Natural Reset Tip of the Day is gonna help you stay snatched all the time. Knowing the summertime, talk to y'all soon.